Welcome again, everybody, to the Beyond Granville webinar. We're so excited to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. My name is Nick Radmer. I am one of the admission counselors here at Denison, and I am also an alum. I graduated in 2018 with degrees in English and theater. So I am a former student of one of the panelists that we have tonight. Um, and I am also an alum of the Denison Study Abroad Experience. I, I spent the spring semester of my junior year studying in Bath, England with the Advanced Studies in England program. So we're really excited to share with you more about uh, global educational opportunities beyond Granville and around the world. And I'd love to start by having our panelists introduce themselves. So if you could just really quickly say your name, your position with the college, and any experiences that you may have had uh, that are relevant to our conversation with global education and experiences. Um, and I'd love to begin with Katie Crossley froelich Hi everyone. Um, can you all hear me okay? Never know with this headset. It's always dicey. It's been acting up today. Um, thank you for, our, for joining us. Um, I've been at Denison. This is my 14th year. I'm on the faculty. I'm a professor, associate professor of political science, and I'm the director of the Center for Global Programs. And I always tell all students and audiences that I wouldn't be in this job if it wasn't for um, my own study abroad experiences in high school a full year abroad, and then what we now call a gap year, but I just called it, I don't know what I want to do with my life year. And so I went back um, to Germany for a year. So that is exactly why I do what I do. That's why I became a political scientist. So I believe in the, the transformative value of all kinds of global opportunities. Passing it to back to Nick, or do you want to uh, popcorn to Cheryl? Great. We can popcorn to Cheryl. Awesome. <laughs> I'm Dr. Cheryl McFerrin. This is my 12th year at Denison. I teach in the theater department and um, like Professor Crossley Frolick, I had a, a very important uh, year abroad when I was a senior in high school. I lived for a year in France. Um, I have taught in the Denison seminar uh, program. In fact, mine was I think the first that we did. Um, and I've, I've taught two different courses. I'll talk a little bit about them in a little while. Um, I've also traveled abroad in the summer program and I'll mention, I'll do a plug for that as well. Thanks. Thank you. We can go to Melanie. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Murphy. I'm the Director of uh, Career Exploration and Campus Engagement in the Knowlton Center, which is our career center. Um, and so we work with students on um, finding global experiences, internship opportunities, um, as well as considering um, working abroad. Um, personally, I did not get a chance to study abroad while I was in college, but I did get to study abroad for a short amount of time, about two weeks, um, when I was in eighth grade, which was really interesting and had an opportunity to go to Spain. So that was my only experience with it, but love connecting students with opportunities to study globally and or to uh, get experiences globally while they're at Denison. Wonderful. Thank you. Elsie? Hi, everyone. So I'm Elsie. I'm a senior and my major is biology, minor is economics. And I, because of my course load and I didn't plan early, I didn't study abroad, but I took advantage of um, Denison's internship program and did an internship in Ghana where um, I, I got so much experience and I think it's kind of um, giving me an idea of what I want to do in future. So I'll speak more on that um, at a later time too. Wonderful, thank you. And last but not least, Rowan Sharkey. Hi everyone, my name is Rowan. I'm a senior here at Denison as well with a double major in data analytics and environmental studies. And funnily enough, I'm actually from Granville, Ohio. So getting off of campus is something that was especially important for me um, to get out of my hometown. So I've had a number of experiences outside of Denison as well as inside Denison. Um, I studied abroad for a year in high school in Sweden. And then while here at uh, campus, I've gone to Germany for an internship as well as Tanzania for a semester long program, which I'll again touch on a little bit later. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So just a few quick housekeeping notes before we get started with our conversation. Uh, the goal of this 
uh, webinar is to give you, the audience, kind of a bird's eye view of a lot of the global opportunities that we offer here at Denison. And as you can tell, this encompasses a lot. We're probably not going to be able to get to everything, uh, but hopefully you can tell that with, with our panelists, we have a pretty great range of expertise and experiences. Um, but I do want to make sure that we are devoting some time at the end of our panel today for some time to answer any questions that you as attendees may have. So we do have a Q&A feature in Zoom. If you do have any questions as we go along, feel free to just pop a question in there. And then we at the end will do our best to address those one by one. Um, if we don't get to everything, I promise I will follow up with you afterwards just to make sure that you're not left behind. So uh, without further ado, I'd love to kick things off with uh, a question for Katie then. I'm wondering if you could just share a little bit more, I suppose, big picture about global programs at Denison and off-campus study, its ethos and its priorities, and, and maybe what sort of distinguishes our approach to this uh, compared to some of our peer institutions. Sure, um, thank you for the question. So off-campus study is actually part of a larger center now, the Center for Global Programs. And in this center, um, we spend a lot of time helping students find uh, that destination abroad that they want to spend a semester or um, maybe a summer opportunity. But it's also the place where we help bring international students and international Denisonians from abroad to campus and to integrate them and onboard them to uh, campus life. So there's a lot of movement. It's all about mobility, if you think about it. And of course, let's not, let's not sort of ignore the elephant in the room. COVID is, has disrupted these routes of mobility, if you will. But nevertheless, sort of our ethics, our ethos, if you will, our philosophy and our priorities around global learning haven't really changed. Um, what I mean by that is that a semester abroad is one experience, but in listening to Rowan and Elsie and, and Dr. Cheryl McFerrin, what you hear are these multiple um, touch points, if you will, for students to have global, a global experience. And to myth bust this idea that off-campus study means just one semester abroad. Our office works very hard to connect with the Knowlton Center, with, um, we don't have the Liska Center here tonight, but with the International Fellowships Office to also connect students to further global opportunities that extend that lens, that broaden that lens, if you will, over the arc of their four-year career. So it's not one, it's multiple. And for every student, I say your DNA makes you unique and your global experience is just as unique or your global experiences are. So our job is to really open those pathways, um, connect you to those pathways on campus. Um, I think that at Denison, we have a very deep commitment to global learning with Dr. Adam Weinberg. So how does this co contribute to the broader college experience? It's embedded in the college experience. Over 50% of the junior class studies abroad in a semester away, but you've heard about Denison seminars. I'll let um, Dr. McFerrin talk a little bit more about that. Those are open to sophomores and juniors. So you can do these, these various things at certain points, at different points along the four-year experience. Um, do you want me to stop there or would you like me to go on? Uh, if you have more to say, then absolutely, uh, please uh, continue. No, I would just say again that it's part of the, the, it's part of the four-year experience at Denison. It's not one moment, it's mo multiple moments that we attempt to bring together um, and to connect you to the right people on campus, students, faculty, staff, other people who've had global experiences so that you can have the same kind of experience. So it's not just one thing, it's many things. And it means different things to different students. Wonderful. And, and I'm curious then as well, Katie, how, what percentage of, of the student body would you say pursues some form of global experience throughout their four years? That's a really good question. So we say about 50% of the junior class, but that, that is a semester abroad. So if we factor in semester abroad with Denison seminars, with global internship opportunities that Melanie Murphy will talk more about, we're talking upwards of 70% of students in terms of having one, at least one global experience. Um, that also doesn't take into account maybe some summer experience that we don't even know about, right? Um, our office also helps students find summer experiences beyond the Denison short-term seminars. Um, but we often don't know about those things until after the fact. So 
The summer is a little bit of a mystery, but we're guessing probably upward around 70%, at least one global experience. And actually, I think one of the creative disruptive factors of COVID has been it's opened up space for students to think very creatively and for the people, the programs that we work with to connect students with other students and other faculty around the world through this thing that we now use very frequently in our lives, Zoom, but in very interesting, meaningful and creative and fun ways. So if anything, while getting on a plane has become more difficult and we expect that to open up in the next year, um, there are other new pathways that have opened up as a result of, of COVID and leveraging the internet and this, this sort of internet world, the cyber world that we're inhabiting more and more so that students can have meaningful experiences. Wonderful, thank you. And I know you mentioned that you know global programs at Denison encompass a lot of different things, um, but I kind of want to begin then with a, a kind of a deep dive in some of the study abroad, semester abroad experiences. And with that, I kind of want to turn to Rowan, who who did have an experience. I know it was uh, interrupted somewhat by by COVID last semester, but I'm hoping Rowan, you could just tell us a little bit more about the program that you pursued in Tanzania, the kind of work you did, and maybe if you could just share a little bit about how you took advantage of resources here on campus to prepare for that experience. Absolutely. So as Nick stated, yeah, I was in Tanzania this past spring semester in 2020. I unfortunately was sent home early due to COVID, but um, that's okay. I still feel absolutely satisfied with my time there. And my professor actually invited me back to the country to conduct research with him after school. So maybe I'll be able to go back, who knows. Um, but essentially for my program, since I'm, I'm an environmental major, it was a coastal ecology and natural resource program. And so that was something specific and niche for me, but we offer hundreds, um, over a hundred different programs of that tackle all different kinds of topics. So no matter what you study or what your major is, there's absolutely a program for you. Um, but for my program specifically, we were not in a classroom. Uh, we did not step in a classroom once throughout my entire semester. Uh, we were out in the field conducting research. So I was out swimming on fringing coral reefs and in mangrove forests and studying monkey behavior, stuff like that. Um, and with the program that I went to, SIT, there's also a independent research aspect for the last two months of your research. Um, or for your semester. So that worked out pretty well with COVID actually. I was able to come back and still conduct my research virtually. Um, so I did my research project about um, climate change within the island archipelago and how farmers develop different resilient practices to combat climate change, um, which was actually published this past summer. So depending on what kind of experience that you're looking for, whether you're wanting in-classroom experience studying something like art history or maybe more field experience, there's definitely a program for you. And I know it seems very, very daunting to hear these stories and then think, oh, well, how in the world am I going to get there? <laughs> um, so there are so many different offices, including the off-campus study office, the Knowlton Center, Liska Center, um, who will connect you to those opportunities. So the best piece of advice I can offer is just send an email. Someone's going to respond. <laughs> um, don't worry about seeming <clears throat> unknowledgeable about a certain area or topic. There is help all around you. Um, but in order to study abroad your junior year, you'll typically start the beginning of your sophomore year. Excuse me. Wonderful. Thank you. I, I think one of the things you definitely hit on, Rowan, was that, you know, these semesters abroad take so many different shapes and, and sizes. And I know that my own experience in England, I did certainly have a classroom component to it. Um, and it felt it was fairly small class sizes, so it felt very comparable to a Denison classroom. But I also did have an internship that was actually a part of my uh, abroad experience. I interned with a street theater company uh, that, that would go out into the community and actually perform little shows so I kind of supported them. So I do think that the off-campus study experience at Denison is takes so many different shapes and you can really pursue the type of program you want to pursue. You can pursue a more research intensive one. I know people, I know one of my friends who studied abroad in Ecuador and hers was a much more service oriented opportunity. So definitely whatever it is that you are looking to get out of your off-campus uh, global experience, I think you can certainly find a program that'll help you do that. 
Uh, but I do want to bring Cheryl's voice into the conversation as well, I guess, as a, as a faculty member. I'm hoping, Cheryl, that you can kind of share a little bit about your perspective with what really makes, you know, global education at Denison a, a worthwhile experience and how it contributes to a student's academic experience. Well, I think, um, gosh, and Katie can certainly chime into that too. Um, but I think that um, there is, it, it is so life enhancing to have the experience of going somewhere uh, where they do things differently so that you get the opportunity to, um, to try something new and have that creative breakthrough that, that comes from seeing things with fresh eyes. Um, so, you know, I think, uh, I think my own life was so enhanced by not understanding, um, you know, for a, for a long time. Um, I went thinking that I spoke the language and realized very quickly that I was on a very steep learning curve and that that developed my own resilience in a number of, of ways. Um, but I think that just being respectful of other ways of doing things is such an e extraordinary experience. Um, so I, you know, I have the experience of going interesting places, um, most, most often as a traveler, but I, I think it is so life enhancing to, to do that. Um, most programs at Denison make that very possible for you. Some are very intricately put together and it becomes a little more difficult to, um, as Elsie was talking about, it becomes a little bit more difficult or challenging to uh, fit in a whole semester long program, but that's why we have other possibilities available to students. Awesome, thank you. So I'm sure we'll talk more about this um, later with the with the Q and A portion, but I do want to shift our conversation a little bit to talk a little bit about internships and global internship opportunities. Uh, so I'd love to begin with Melanie. Then, if you could just kind of give us a brief overview, a kind of look at the uh, Denison internship program in general, and then maybe from there, kind of focus on how students can pursue global opportunities and how that fits into the larger program itself. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So our global internship program fits into our larger program, which is the Denison internship program. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about what that is specifically and then, and then head into the global side of it. Um, the Denison internship program is a wraparound program to support a student in the completion of their internship. So um, from the time you start looking for an internship um, until you're finished with it and you're reflecting upon your experience and trying to update your resume to reflect that experience, um, we're going to work with you. And so we do some preparation to help you understand, um, you know, what are your goals that you're headed into your internship? What are you looking to accomplish? What are the skills you want to learn? Um, how will you have the networking conversations that you need to have with the people in your internship to um, you know, start to build your professional network and, um, you know, looking towards your future career goals. In addition, that program offers, um, due to the generous support we have of uh, Denison alumni and donors, we have the opportunity to have a stipend program as well that will help offset the cost of participating in an internship, and that's domestic internships and internships abroad. And so, um, there's a process we go through uh, where you will apply and you will put together a budget um, because it might be very different if you are living in Cleveland, Ohio versus New York City versus Madrid, right? Your, your costs and your expenses are going to be different and so we'll work with you on that. Um, and ultimately work, you'll interview and we'll do a whole, we'll go through a whole process um, and students can be awarded up to $4,500 um, depending on need level um, and kind of where you are and your own personal needs with, with the travel um, to, to help offset the cost of, of participating in an internship. So um, it doesn't have to be an unpaid internship. Um, sometimes, you know, an internship abroad is going to be more expensive, um, you know, even if it is paid, which that's less common, but even if it is paid, you know, you know, an internship in New York City isn't going to, you know, pay you enough to um, be able to cover travel and food and all of those things. So that's kind of the overall. 
As part of the Denison Internship Program, um, we started something called the Global Internship Program. And that is specifically looking at internships over the summer. Um, I know, and, and Katie can probably speak more to this, but there are some study abroad programs that have internships as a component, and we'll talk about that, but that's part of the study abroad program. Um, the, the internships we're talking about in the Knowlton Center are summer experiences. So during the summer, you would go um, somewhere. Um, we've partnered with different organizations in the past. Um, last year, we partnered with um, an organization called the Academic Internship Council. And we had students, um, well, this was not the summer of 2020, um, the summer prior, <laughs> summer of 2019, we had students, um, I don't, I can't even list all the places where we had them. We had um, students everywhere um, studying abroad. And we work with that organization to um, help you find an experience abroad that's in line with your, um, with your, and Elsie, that's the program you did, correct? You did our AIC program, I believe. Yeah. And so we'll work with you and the company and the, the organization to help you determine, um, you know, what are your long term career goals and how can we find you a position, um, you know, whether you have a specific location where you want to be within that program or you say, you know what, I really just want the best program that's going to help me in my quest to, um, you know, study public health, right, whatever it is that you're most interested in will we'll help you get there. Um, the other big piece of um, uh, the internship program, so I talked about the stipend program, but then when you return, um, we'll really help you kind of put back what, you, what you've learned and um, you know, how do you differentiate yourself from your, you know, and sell yourself with your um, internship abroad versus a, a domestic internship and how do you really use that at, to leverage your skills and leverage your experience when you're talking Awesome. And I was actually hoping you could maybe expand a bit on, on that question, Melanie, on how maybe logistically the, the process of applying for an internship may differ if you're doing it globally versus domestically. And I guess also to how, in, in your perspective, how you would recommend people, uh, you know, talk about those differences uh, in a meaningful way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll, two different things I'll talk about here. So um, the first is when you're, um, when you are um, applying for an internship, there's two different processes. One, you can, you can look at the um, global internship program, which is a series of countries where we will say, okay, we have partnered with this organization and these are our locations. So I think last year we had six different locations um, and you will work with our office and the company that we're working with last two years ago was AI Academic Internship Council. Um, and you'll work, we'll work together to find the location and, and put together your application package and all of that. So, so that's one way of obtaining an internship abroad. There are also times when students find internship opportunities with multinational corporations um, that have a location in another country and they want to do that. So say it is um, that you want to work for Deloitte, but you found a position with Deloitte in another country. Um, those are the kinds of things where we will help you. Um, we have a bunch of, we have access to a lot of really great tools um, that will help students um, kind of navigate finding those opportunities. One of, one of those tools is called Going Global. Um, it is a tool that helps you learn a little bit more about the country, about what does, what, you know, careers are different everywhere and the, the process for going about applying to a job somewhere else. Um, you know, we'll, we might have to then work with, um, you know, other offices on campus with visas and all of that stuff. So generally, we are going to push you towards our programs that we have partnerships with. Um, but we have had students who have identified, um, you know, uh, internships in other places. One example, we have an alum who um, has had a Denison student multiple years um, to do um, at, in Greece at the Palace of Nestor to do an excavation, um, a dig there. And so that's a partnership that we've had with that alum for a while. And so um, that's an example where it's not quite part of our global internship program of the set places where we send students but is something that our office will work with, um, work with you to, to help find opportunities. So, um, and again, that's in addition to the possible internship opportunities that you can do sometimes as a part of um, study abroad. 
uh, for the other part of your question, in terms of kind of articulating that, um, you know, we've done a number of things. Sometimes, you know, I, I laugh when, when students are in our office, sometimes when a student has studied abroad um, and I'll ask them about it, they might sometimes say something about, oh, it was so great. I saw so many wonderful things. I ate great food. Um, and I said, that's all wonderful. But tell me more. If, if, I'm your if I'm the person interviewing you, I want to hear, you know, it, not as many people study abroad as you think. I don't know the quite, Katie or Cheryl, you guys might know the, the numbers. I don't know what the statistics are, but it's not as many as you think. And, um, you know, so I, I would, you know, we, we really talk about, okay, you know, what skills did you learn? You put yourself in a new, unfamiliar environment. What does that say about you as a professional? How does that, how do you, um, how do you take that and leverage that and say, hey, you're looking for someone who you said is willing to take risks and take chances. Let me tell you about a time when I took a big risk um, and I went by myself as a junior to XYZ location or whatever it might be, right? So um, we're gonna poke and prod and kind of dig some of that information out of you as I'm sure you know, you'll do also in your reflection opportunities when you come back. But often students don't think about it in the lens of a, you know, a job interview or future um, in, you know, internship interview or things like that. And so our job is to help you kind of um, pull that out of you and help you tell that story really well. Wonderful, thank you. So I, I do want to bring Elsie in too. I know you've been waiting patiently for us to get to you, Elsie. Um, but I do want to uh, ask a little bit more, I guess, about your internship experience in Ghana. So if you could just tell us a little bit more about the kind of work you were doing. And I know you had mentioned earlier that it really sort of helped clarify, you know, some of your career aspirations after Denison. If you could talk a little bit about that as well, that would be great. Yes, of course. Um, so. I think for me, my path to doing like a global experience was a little different. And I think that's one thing. Um, coming to Denison, I thought I had to do a semester long program in order to have the global experience. Um, but I just couldn't manage it with, because I'm a bio major, econ minor, I just couldn't manage it um, and have a whole semester. Um, but luckily, I started talking with Knowlton Center early. And so what happened? ended up happening was I did do a global program. I was supposed to do one this summer and go to Toronto with AIC, what M Melanie was referring to, but because of COVID that got canceled. But even that, like I still started the process um, of meeting like um, employers and just speaking with people. Um, but with the Ghana internship, the way that was different was because I went to Knowlton Center, I identified what I was interested in, which is, um, I'm a science major, I want to explore that field. Um, I think I like clinical, but I haven't done like hospital work yet. And um, just by being in class, I just knew I didn't like being in the lab for too long. Um, so then I also explored that. And in those conversations, I'm an international student. So that's why I said my experience was different. So in my conversation, it came, what are you interested in? Um, and one thing, it's fine if your global experience is close to where you are, but if you're given an ex if you're exploring something that brings you up or builds you up, that's fine. People go further away from home. People go closer to home. And with me, I did want to have a summer in Ghana, um, but where my internship was located was so far from home. Um, and it was the same eight to five, so I couldn't like be going home. It was in a different region. Um, so the way that experience, the way I found the experience was going to Knowlton. I checked on LinkedIn. I checked on um, just the Denison site because later I figured I wouldn't be able to stay in the U.S. for the summer. And then I sent my resume out. Um, I sent it. I also looked for like research, big research company names in Ghana. Like I'm from Ghana, but I don't know all the stuff. So I just Googled and I found different institutions. I ended up finding this institution I work for called Noguchi. And um, I got the chance to work on virology, which is like HIV. And um, with that, I had to do a phone interview. I had to, um, when, I, when I got to Ghana, I had to meet them in person. Um, they looked at my, the stuff I actually have done on campus in my labs and how that bridges the gap with what I was going to do. And, um, I got the chance to then 
work on the clinical aspects. I was going to hospitals and meeting, um, following gui um, safety guidelines, um, IRB things, and meeting with patients and collecting data. Coupled with that, I got to work in a lab. So I got to combine two different interests, plus be in Ghana, which is home, but I wasn't with my family. I saw them at the beginning when I got to Ghana and then the end of my internship. But I was still in a famili familiar but different. Um, I think it definitely exposed me to healthcare and how that is different. So the, on the latter part, when I said it's helping me, I'm still career exploring. I don't think you ever, I'm young, but I don't think you ever finish um, exploring. I'm sure after a point I'll be like, I'm interested in this. But it definitely made me interested in like public health. I know I got to do like lab work and I enjoyed that. But what my enjoyment and passion came out more when I was doing clinical work. And so that has like, that's shaping me as a senior and like exploring what I want to do in job wise or even grad school wise. Um, yeah, so some of the advantages I took Wisdom, okay, what well, wisdom I can share. I would say that um, it's okay to want to have a unique experience. Um, sometimes there's a dominant experience when you hear um, a global internship, but explore, you can start early. So if you're already on the school, that's a good, like that's a good first step because I started in um, sophomore year. But you can start early, just you speak to Norton Center, they are very friendly. Um, Leska Center too is helpful when it comes to fellowships. Um, and then get to do something different. Um, but how different it is, you get to define it. It can be far from home, it can be close to home, and like people are here to help you. I hope I answered the question. Absolutely, you did. Great. Thank you, Elsie. Uh, and I do want to ask Rowan as well, because I know that um, you, you mentioned earlier you did pursue uh, a global internship in Berlin. So I was hoping you could share a little bit more about that experience, too. Yeah, absolutely. And before I touch on that, I want to go back to a point that Melanie said earlier about finding internships that aren't necessarily affiliated with Denison and the Knowlton Center still helping out. So for this summer of 2020, I actually found an internship with a data company out in Taiwan. And so that was through a different connection through one of my roommates' moms, actually. Um, but then it is unpaid, so I was a little bit worried about finance. And so I approached the Knowlton Center, and they were more than, help, more than happy to help me out with that. So even though it didn't go through, um, even if you find something that's outside of the Denison sphere, there are connections within the university that still want to help you. Um, but then going back to my time in Berlin, so this was the summer of 2019, and this was through kind of a combination of the Knowlton Center and the Liska Center for Scholarly Engagement. So what you'll find at Denison is that a lot of these offices are interlinked and interconnected, so there's a lot of crossover. Um, but it was through a company called DAAD German Exchange, which is where essentially you apply to do research with a PhD student for three months. So I was afforded that scholarship. The Knowlton Center, again, helped fund me for my stay over there by providing transportation costs, housing costs, food, all that really awesome stuff um, so that I was actually able to go there. Um, and while I was there, I was conducting research about urban air quality. So one big takeaway for me, I love working in the field. Um, so I was out every single day biking for four hours collecting air particle data um, and seeing how people's lung health could be affected by nearby airports and the particles that were emitted from them. So super cool stuff um, that's gonna be published again this upcoming year. So by the end of my Denison career, I'll have three publications, which is really awesome. <laughs> um, and as Elsie and other people were mentioning, these opportunities really do help you for professional careers as well. I'm currently in the application process for a Fulbright scholarship, which is where you either teach English abroad or you conduct research abroad. I'm doing the latter, um, so I want to do research out in New Zealand for next year. And so being able to have on your resume and your application, hey, I've lived by myself in these countries, um, you know, for X, Y, Z, however many months, and this is what I got from that. That is really, really impressive. That shows a lot of drive and that shows a lot of initiative that um, is pretty unique. Yeah, you, uh, Melanie was touching on, on it earlier, but um, surprisingly in the US, not a whole lot of people travel abroad. So that is one factor that is really gonna make you stand out in those applications for after school as well. Um, and one last thing I wanted to mention, 
just another plug into all these resources. Um, you can use them five years after you graduate. And that is not something that is common for a lot of colleges and universities. Um, sometimes you're kind of pushed out the door once you graduate, but here they are really wanting to make sure that you get the most out of your um, learning experiences in school and apply them to other places outside of the Denison sphere. Wonderful. Thanks so much. And I actually work uh, fairly closely with Rowan in the admission office. And I think right now, I'm just the first time I'm learning that you're actually going for a Fulbright. So that's amazing. That, congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so <you>. <laughs> happy to learn about that now. And, um, and to make another connection there, we had an intern last, in 2019, who interned at the Fulbright Commission um, in Chile. Wow, awesome. So you can tell that, you know, the, the connections that we have here at Denison um, with, with Fulbrighter run pretty deep, certainly. Um, awesome. But then I do um, want to transition one more time over to the sphere of Denison seminars. Um, and for that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl. I believe Cheryl has some uh, uh, visual aids that have been uh, prepared for tonight as well. So I'd love to just kind of start, uh, Cheryl, with... Um, you know, what are Denison seminars? And if you could share a little bit more about uh, your own experience with them. All right, there we go. All right, let's see, I'm gonna hit play. There we go. All right, so um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Denison seminars and also about the summer travel experiences. Um, and I've had more experience with the Denison seminars than I have with the summer travel experiences, but, um, the, but I'll talk about them anyway. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, what is a Denison seminar? Well, uh, as Katie mentioned, they are, I think it was Katie, they are for sophomores and juniors. They're interdisciplinary. They're team taught. So you, you get the benefit of two, two people, generally speaking. Travel is likely, but not required. Um, and the two that I taught were called Shakespeare by the Sword, uh, which I taught in 2014, 15, and 17, and Ayubowan, the Art and Culture of Sri Lanka. And that's what you're seeing on your screen is stopping for King Coconut on the road. And why would you do this? Um, and the, I. I couldn't think of these things as uh, Nick lobbed the question to me, but I'll try and be a little more articulate now. Um, travel is a way to spark creative breakthroughs, to enhance our intercultural competence. Uh, I've found that traveling together is a way to deepen relationships, uh, both as the, the mentor leader of the group and also among the group members themselves. Um, you are having a collective memorable experience. It's a real adventure, uh, no matter where you go. And uh, I think it's a way of cultivating perspective, humility, and gratitude. It's, um, there's, there's nothing like uh, the experience of taking in uh, the experiences of somewhere else. So I thought I'd show you some pictures uh, because if a picture is worth a thousand words, then I should just be quiet. Um, Katie mentioned an elephant in the room. Well, I don't have one in the room, but I, do I did get to see one on the road. Uh, we, uh, that's a wild elephant. Um, I think on the way to Polinarua in Sri Lanka, it's the second time that we have gotten to see elephants in the wild. Uh, this time we were in a big bus in our prior travel seminar, um, a summertime experience where we went for three weeks to Sri Lanka with a small group of students. Um, we got to see one in a van and the van driver kept his foot near the gas pedal because uh, if they charge, that's a bad thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's an un uncanny experience to see that kind of animal in its native environment. Um, on the top right, we're going to a tea plantation. Uh, that was with our uh, full semester length experience studying art and culture. Um, some students from that class learning to play the drums. And um, this was uh, just such an 
incredible experience. They are studying with two, with a, a, a dance teacher on the right and with um, a member of a very prominent drum fa family in Sri Lanka at the Isle Center in Kandy. And they are dressed in the uh, traditional garb and even gave a performance. They were playing oh, about an hour and a half for a day for about a week. So they got to, you know, being able to do a few of the, the rhythms, um, which was an incredible experience for these top-notch students who are so uh, experienced in certain kinds of academic pursuits to try and learn to walk again. It was really quite an experience. And uh, some, oh, I think I showed you the tea plantation twice. Well, how about that? Um, <laughs> we visited a number of temples where uh, the artwork is, is extraordinary and often tells uh, incredible stories. We saw colors in exotic flowers. That's from the uh, botanic gardens in Peridinia. Um, it, it's an extraordinary experience to go so very far away. Um, and when we went to Stratford, Ontario with Shakespeare by the Sword, uh, we got to explore the Stratford Festival's costume uh, storage facility. Um, that's what the gentlemen are modeling. They're not just horsing around. They were actually doing the work of the class. Um, in the bottom right hand corner, I think you see a bit of that bonding that's that the students are experiencing seeing Shakespeare. Uh, we saw four plays over the course of a weekend. Um, three of them Shakespeare and the course was built on those plays themselves. And uh, I'll leave you with the collective experience of the adventure. In the center of that picture is an actor by the name of Tom Rooney. And um, we all sort of were smitten with him and we tweeted at him and got him to not only take a picture with us, but to come out to dinner for a, with us for a little while. So uh, we had our own brush with, um, I guess being fanboys and girls, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure I answered all the questions. Um, summer travel experiences are, are brief experiences where you go with uh, a couple of faculty members to um, a slate of places. The Denison seminars uh, have a, a course of study that is enhanced often by travel. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And, th and thank you for, for sharing some of these pictures as well. I, I know that, like you said, pic uh, pictures worth a thousand words. For, so thank you. Um, so I do want to, uh, like I said at the beginning, I do want to spend some time um, answering some questions that you, the audience, may have posed. So I'll just remind you, if you do have anything, feel free to pop it in the Q&A. Uh, but I do uh, just want to ask one last question before we turn to that. I guess I'll pose it to Katie then. Um, for, for a student who wants to pursue some type of global program, whether it's a study abroad experience, an internship experience, a research component, but just has no idea where to start and how to begin that process, how would you recommend that they you know, get started and, and kickstart that process? Well, I think Elsie said it best. They're, mm -hmm. they're here tonight. So that's the first thing, just being open and curious. But in terms of process itself, um, I'll try not to make it too dry, but um, <laughs> we typically begin outreach um, in the first semester of the sophomore year. So right now we are working with sophomores to prepare them for study abroad in the junior year. Um, it takes about a year to get this all lined up. And, and students often ask, well, why is it take so long? Well, I often use the metaphor of an airplane, a big airplane. A big airplane needs a long runway to take off. And this is a lot of work. There are a lot of elements that go into this. Exploring programs. So one of the first things I would recommend for anybody on, on this, on this, uh, in this webinar is to go to globaltools.denison.edu and you can immediately start looking at all the programs we have, over 250 of them, including domestic programs. So Elsie had an internship at home. We have students who also want to study in another city in the US. That's also an off-campus experience. That's an off-campus experience without a passport. Granville is a small city. 
the town. Columbus is a million people, but students often want to go and explore other cities in the US. So I just want to put that out there. When we mean off campus, we mean passports, but also places to go that don't require a passport. So anyway, reach out in the sophomore year. The first thing that students typically do is they attend something called Study Abroad 101, which is now a series of video modules. Um, it takes about 45 minutes to complete. There's a fun scavenger hunt at the end, a little quiz. And then you're basically open to um, lots of advisement from our office about what might you want to do that's aligned with your major. You don't have to study abroad and find a program that fits with your major. In fact, many students find programs that have nothing to do with their major. And that's okay, because the reality is, is that there's so many things that you can do and you can complete your course of study, four years, 127 credits, in lots of different ways. So you don't have to pick a program that's aligned with your major. Some students like to do that. Some students say, I'm not really sure what I wanna do, but I just wanna go somewhere. Um, after, after that advisement piece happens, you meet with your faculty advisor, somebody like Dr. McFerrin, um, to help sort of put the academic pieces together, to help you map out where you are in your sophomore year, where you will be in your junior year and your senior year help you also think about what you might do in the summer. So Melanie talked about the global internship program. Some students talk about or think about doing a spring semester abroad in their junior year, and then tacking on a global internship experience in the summer between um, that, that junior year, the end of their junior year and their senior year. Or they think about another um, LISCA opportunity, maybe a critical language scholarship to study an understudied language, to learn an understudied language. So, after the advisement piece happens and after you're cleared to study abroad from our office, then we basically open a door, if you will, where you make another application to the program provider. We partner with organizations. We vet the organizations for academic rigor. We vet them for safety. Um, and then you apply to them and they will prepare you um, really for the, the last phase, if you will. We offer an orientation program that's, that's mandatory. We also offer a really a two-part series, credit bearing, called um, Beyond the Hill, which is an extended preparation, if you will, orientation for the study abroad experience. And then a return to the Hill course, which runs over two and a half days. Melanie has participated in that and people from the Knowlton Center to help students start unpacking that experience and putting it together, putting these pieces together. I think one of the big takeaways from this evening is there's, again, there's no single path but you can put these pieces together, your pathway, in the way that makes sense for you. And also, I think, let the opportunities come your way, right? You can have a plan, but also be open to the possibility of things coming your way that you never anticipated. The Denison seminars are a great thing. You sign up for those as a regular class. You have no idea what that will lead to. We have students who say, I, I've taught to myself, and I had a student on one of mine who said, I'm doing this because I am terrified of the idea of going abroad for a semester. My parents really want me to do this, but I don't wanna do this. And this is the only way I'm gonna feel safe. She had never been on an airplane. She was terrified about flying. She went on the trip, she made it over fine. Um, she came back, she said, you know what? This, I had a great time, but I cannot be away from home from the US for a semester. I was like, that's totally fine. But she had a good experience. But you know what happened? Six months later, I ran into her in the quad and she said, I'm going abroad. I've let this simmer and I'm ready to do this now. So it's just a matter of finding your way. And I always would say to students, let it, if it sings in your heart, then it's the right thing for you. You can't over plan it, right? But you can't under plan. And you want to think about your career, but you also want to think about what's meaningful for you. And what is the story that you're going to tell when you graduate? And how is that story, that one story, which is a chapter, going to lead to the next chapter. So Rowan is talking about a Fulbright. That's going to open another door. Elsie's going to talk about graduate school. What, what, what lies beyond that? So it's just being open to those things and all these connection points on our campus. And so that's why we're here, is to make those connections. And the students are just as important. They are the best spokespersons for these programs than we are, because they've lived them. We, we've talked about them. And we advise, but they have lived those. So that's what I would say. It starts in the sophomore year, but really even in the first year, 
you're going to meet people, you're going to meet faculty, you're going to meet students who are going to start talking about that. And it's in the, it's in the air, if you will, um, about all these things that you can do at Denison. So I'll leave it at that. I'm sure there'll be more questions about it. Process can be kind of boring, but it really does take off in the sophomore year for the semester abroad. Thank you so much, Katie. I mean, I, I can definitely, as an, uh, a former study abroad student, I can definitely say of, of all the experiences I had at Denison, I think that, you know, my semester in Europe was certainly the, the experience that made me feel the most confident being independent and the most confident, you know, ex exploring new places and new cultures. And I think that really you know, ties into a lot of what we've been talking about today. But I can certainly attest to what, what Katie is talking about, in addition to what Rowan and Elsie have said. Um, great. But I, I do now want to turn to the Q&A feature. Um, and I, just to kind of kick us off, I guess we have a question here that's uh, sort of two-pronged. Um, one is, well, to start, what countries in Europe do we offer internships in? And I'd imagine almost all of them. <laughs> but um, uh, I, going off of that, how are internships changing and what are these experiences looking like uh, in the age of COVID? And also, we're wondering if we could talk a little bit more about how Columbus fits in to the uh, internship experience or the study abroad um, global program experience in general. So I'll toss that to, I guess we can begin with Melanie. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so um, in terms of um, locations in um, Europe, we, we have, um, we actually are partnering with a new organization this year called Global Experiences. Um, and so there's a variety of, of locations, London, Barcelona, uh, Berlin, um, lots of different places on their list. Um, but again, remember, those aren't the only places. Those are the ones through the program, right? Um, um, and yes, uh, Katie mentioned globaltools.denison.edu is where you'll be able to find um, other um, programs and, and be able to search by location. So um, that's one, one area. Um, I think the second question was about COVID and how have things changed? And that's, that's a really great question. Um, we did have some students last um, summer, this past summer, who ended up completing their their um, international internship um, from home. <laughs> so they did it remote. They still worked for um, you know this other country, and and it, it required some unique timing and different independent work projects and things. But we were able to work that out. Um, and with this new company, Global Experiences, um, when we when we do this, we will have a um, option where if the um, internship is canceled due to travel restrictions or anything like that, there is a, glo a, a virtual component worked into it so that that is something that can still take place so that you can still have the internship experience. So we're trying to um, you know, pivot and adjust and make the best um, that we can out of those situations. And, and students are still finding a lot of value in that as well. So um, I think those were the two global questions. And then Nick, was there a question about internships in Columbus? Yeah, yeah, I guess the, the question itself asked, um, you know, how, um, what kinds of internships are, are offered in Columbus and, and, and if it's, if they take place during the summer or during weekends or things like yeah. that. But I guess I, I'm, I'm wondering too, if we can expand that to how Columbus kind of fits in to yeah. the broader career exploration and internship program and perhaps globally as well. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, Columbus is home to a lot of amazing companies that have a global presence. Um, and so, um, you know, we are, um, you know, always, we have great partnerships with, with companies um, that are doing work all over the world. And um, you, know, you can learn a lot about um, opportunities to you know, grow into um, different roles and different, you know, in different locations with one particular company. Um, we do, you know, internships are, um, students find internships all over the, you, you know, domestic and abroad. Um, and we, um, 
we kind of, you find those in two different ways. So um, we source them, um, sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> um, we source them through a couple of different um, ways. So a lot of our, um, our Denison alumni will post internship opportunities with us. Um, we will ha we have um, you know companies that we have longstanding relationships that post um, opportunities with us and we we share those with students um, you know frequently but um, you know we always encourage you if if, if you know globally if, if if you want to experience the work that a company does in the global side of their work we want to make sure you're asking those questions in your internship you know um, talk about what does what does, I think a great example, um, you know, we, we're home here to the limited brand, right? They have a huge global component. Um, I learned really interesting stuff that I never knew about um, kind of uh, retail stores in airports and the entire industry that exists within that and how you can travel and experience so many different locations um, by being in that um, very specific industry. So there's just lots of opportunities to learn um, directly from companies um, right here in Columbus, but also, you know, New York, Chicago. Um, our big internship locations are certainly Columbus, Cleveland, um, Chicago, Boston, DC, New York. Um, those are our big ones, but everywhere. <laughs> Nick, can I just add on to what Melanie was saying? I mean, the great thing about working with Knowlton and, and the off campus piece is. Knowlton has this amazing stipend program that they can provide to students. So Knowlton Center can provide that financial support for internships in the summer, global internships. Off-campus study, many of the summer programs, but many of the semester long programs have internships built in. We cannot provide any stipend, but what those programs do is they award academic credit. So that's why I'm saying you can do both. You can do an internship that's embedded in an off-campus experience and earn academic credit for it. And then, or before, do a global internship through the Knowlton Center. So that's why I was saying at the very beginning, it's not just one. You can put these things together in very interesting ways. It's almost like a kaleidoscope of opportunities. And you can turn this and see what you can, you know, what you can come up with um, through really good advisement from these various offices on campus. And many of the domestic programs in the US are internship heavy. Half of the academic credit that's awarded is for an internship. And in COVID, to go back to COVID, one of the things that I think has been really interesting is that students have suddenly sort of become aware of the fact that they can have these really rewarding internship experiences in the US around a theme, environmental sustainability, social justice, something in the fine arts, um, something in communications or politics or um, public health. I mean, the, the opportunities are really limitless, even in a COVID world. And they are doing, students are doing many virtual internships and they are, they are finding them very rewarding. So just to, just to kind of piggyback on that, that these two things can go hand in hand. It's not if you do an internship through Knowlton that you can't do an internship through another um, sort of another opportunity at Denison. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but just to add to that. No, not at all. Thank you. Um, so I think we just have time for just one last question. Uh, if you do, uh, attendees, have any other questions, feel free to type them in still, and I will reach out to you individually afterwards. But one last question I did want to address, you started to touch on it a bit, a bit Katie. Um, was for students who are wondering how they're actually going to finance a full semester abroad or, or a, a Denison a seminar or a summer experience. Um, what does the finance side sort of look at the things? Are, are there financial aid opportunities or anything else like that for these experiences? There are. And I, at the very beginning, I'll say I'm not a financial aid officer. So I can talk in very general terms at 38,000 feet. Um, for a semester abroad, I'll start there. Semester abroad, all need-based aid can apply towards the cost of the program. So whatever the cost of the program is, any need-based aid can be applied to the cost and um, merit-based aid is not. Denison is committed to meeting the full need of all students. What that means usually is a variety of financial instruments to make that happen. A Denison grant, subsidized loans, unsubsidized loans. So that's what we mean by meeting full need for a semester abroad. In addition, we do have discretionary funds. I'm happy to report that we now have a good um, fund to cover things like 
immunizations and visas and passport fees and travel to Chicago and DC to get those visas. Um, cell phones, because you need a smartphone when you travel. This is all related to risk now too. So these were things that we, can, we could previously not cover. We actually do have funding for that. Um, for the dentists and seminars, the fee, there's like basically a lab fee. I'll just call it that. This, this associated activity fee with the course. I believe it's $800 for those that have international travel associated with them. But again, need is factors in. We look at the financial profile of the students who are enrolled in the class. If they are high need students, the cost of that is adjusted downward. So students can pay as little as nothing. A student who has no need at all, no demonstrated financial need would pay the full $800. But what I would say about that is, Cheryl just showed you these amazing pictures from Sri Lanka. That covers your round trip air ticket, that covers your hotel, it covers your ground transportation, at least one meal a day. It is the most economical, actually, way to study abroad. And the data shows that those experiences of short term are just as transformative and impactful as a semester abroad. So it's not about quantity, it's not about the number of weeks abroad, but it's really about how you bring that experience together, how it's arranged, how it's organized, who's making it work for you with faculty like that. For internships, Melanie's talked about the global internship program. The summer is a little bit different if you come through the off-campus study office and you do a summer program. There's no financial aid that applies in the summer because we don't have summer school at Denison. So all those experiences are financed out of pocket. That is, that is not to say though that there aren't scholarship opportunities out there, there are. And Pell eligible students for semester abroad, we strongly encourage them to apply for a Gilman scholarship, which will fund up to $5,000. And many programs now will match that. So if you win $5,000 $5, through um, Gilman, you will be matched with another $5,000 through the program. So lots and lots of ways to um, fund these opportunities, financial aid, our office, and we also work with um, other offices on campus. So don't let finances get in the way. Don't let it censor you from thinking about what you can possibly do. Absolutely. I, I know one of the many things that Denison does pride itself on is the socioeconomic diversity of its student body. So I, I certainly did want to emphasize that that we do not want to, you know, gatekeep these experiences for those for, for whom finances may be a concern. So thank you. Um, but I do want to be respectful of everybody's time. I know we're a little bit over, uh, but I, I think that's just because there's so much to talk about. So um, thank you all so much for uh, sitting in and, and listening this evening. Thank you so much to our panelists for participating. Again, if you do have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to the admission office. Um, I'm going to go ahead and a limb and say that all of our panelists would be happy to, to field any questions that, that you may have as well. Um, and one last note as well, this is, like I mentioned at the beginning, one in a series of webinars that the Office of Admission is hosting on all manner of topics related to Denison. So on our website, if you're interested in attending more of these panels, you can certainly do that as well. So thank you all again so much. I uh, hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and uh, best of luck with wherever you are in the college search process. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.